When we move to the second step of two-step profit maximization, we said that firms are going to choose an output level where price is equal to marginal cost, as long as that price is at least the break-even price that allows us to make zero profit. And we identified that break-even price along the marginal cost curve. So if we have a U-shaped marginal cost curve, we said the firm will produce where price is equal to marginal cost, but as that price falls, we'll get to prices where we actually start losing money on the initial units that we produce. And at some point, the price will fall to a level like this, where we lose money all the way up to this point, and then we start making money on the additional units up to this point. So for the, for the first unit, we make this much in revenue, but it costs us more than that, so we lose money on the first unit. For the second unit, we make this much additional revenue, but our additional costs are higher than that, so we lose money on the second unit. And that happens all the way up to this point, creating a negative profit area in here. Once price is above marginal cost, we start making money on each additional unit that we produce, creating this positive profit area. And when we reach a price where that negative area is the same size as that positive area, we found our break-even price, the price that allows us to make zero profit. So then we know that the firm is going to produce where price is equal to marginal cost if the price is the break-even price or above. But if the price falls below that, the firm's not going to produce anything. So that gave us the supply curve for the firm. Now that we've developed a way of including average costs in the picture, we'll have a second way of identifying that break-even price. And to see this, we have to remind ourselves that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. Now total revenue is simply the price we charge times how many units we sell. So if the price is up here, we know we're going to produce where price is equal to marginal cost. So we're going to produce this quantity x. Total revenue is price times quantity. Price times quantity gives us this green box, which becomes our total revenue box. We can also see what our average cost is in this picture. At this output level, the average cost is given by the average cost curve. Now remember that average costs is equal to total cost minus output. So multiplying through by x, we can rewrite this as total cost is equal to average cost times x. So if we know that our average cost when we produce this output level is this much, this is our average cost when we produce this much, we can multiply that average cost by the output that we produce and we get this magenta box. Average cost times output is equal to total cost, so we have a total cost box. That total cost box in this case is smaller than the total revenue box, giving us another box here that's the difference between the two, and that difference is the profit. So here we have a price where we're making a positive profit. But as price falls, the average cost and the price are going to get closer to each other. And eventually, when the price hits at the lowest point of the average cost curve, price is equal to average cost. So when we hit this lowest point, the average cost, when we produce this much output, is read off of the average cost curve. So that's this level. And that's where the price is. So when the price hits this blue price, we produce along the marginal cost curve, but the average cost is equal to the price. So price times output gives us this blue box, and average cost times output also gives us the blue box. So our total revenue 
and our total cost box become identical when price hits the lowest point of the average cost curve. In other words, we found our break-even price. So if we put the average cost curve in this picture, it would have to cross at the break-even price. And we can identify the break-even price by just knowing where the average cost crosses the marginal cost. So if we redraw this, put in our U-shaped marginal cost curve and our average cost curve, we know that the break-even price happens at that intersection point and the supply curve is just the portion of the marginal cost that lies above the average cost because that's the break-even price and below that price will produce nothing. So we can get rid of this portion of the marginal cost curve and we're simply left with the supply curve for the firm. So this becomes the supply curve. This will also hold if we have recurring fixed costs. So if we have recurring fixed costs, we would have a marginal cost that might look like this and an average cost that starts above the marginal cost. It'll still be U-shaped. It'll cross the marginal cost at its lowest point. But now, because they start at different points, we know there's a recurring fixed cost. Now this method of identifying the break-even price by just using the marginal cost curve wouldn't work because the marginal cost curve doesn't include fixed costs. So this method wouldn't work, but the method of using the lowest point of the average cost to identify the break-even price does still work. So at this price, if the price hits the lowest point of the average cost curve, we are producing along the marginal cost, so we're producing this quantity. And at that quantity, the average cost curve tells us what our average costs are, and price is equal to average cost. So price times quantity gives us our total revenue. Average cost times quantity gives us our total cost. And at this price, at the lowest point of the average cost curve, the two boxes are exactly the same. So we've again identified our break-even price by just identifying where the average cost curve crosses the marginal cost curve. And so for any marginal and average cost curves, we now know how to identify the break-even price and therefore how to identify the supply curve because the supply curve is the portion of the marginal cost that lies above average cost because at the lowest point of average cost is where the break-even price happens, and then the firm would supply nothing below the break-even price.